This month's Garden Discovery Walk is at Rainier Beach Urban Farm and Wetland in South Seattle. Come join me as I give you a tour of the farm in March. Rainier Beach Urban Farm and Wetlands is operated by the Friends of Rainier Beach Urban Farm and Wetlands and managed by the Tilth Alliance. It's a Seattle park and it's open to the public. What you find when you arrive is a working farm. There's food grown here year round. You'll find staff, neighbors, the volunteers, many people working to help add to the food sustainability movement in Seattle. In the winter time, there are still vegetables growing. The farm isn't super beautiful and abundant at this time of year, but it is amazing what you can still find. Come on a tour with me and you'll see lots of interesting things happening. The land where this farm is situated is right next to Lake Washington and it is formerly a wetland. When the Friends of Rainier Beach Urban Farm and Wetlands took over the park and renovated it, they created some canals to drain the water off of the farmland where the water table is very high. These now are a beautiful area for wildlife. We see ducks and beavers living in these areas. The community kitchen is used for community dinners and demonstrations, as well as a classroom space indoors. Volunteer visitors are offered vegetables from the U-Pick garden and often a vegan lunch on Fridays. The focus at this park is on community. There is a CSA or Community Supported Agriculture program that people can sign up to get weekly food allotments that are grown in the garden here at the farm and sometimes supplemented by local farmers. This park is a working farm so at any given time that you visit you'll see it at different stages. In this photograph you see that many of the beds are covered with burlap sacks. That's one way to deal with weeds. See lots of tools around the site. There are many volunteers that will come during the week, sign up to help with some of the jobs around the farm. Classes are held here in gardening and all kinds of interesting things for all ages. After school programs, summer camps, and adult learning on how to grow vegetables, what kinds of things we can learn, are the latest techniques in our backyard gardens, and how to create structures like this 
cold frame that would normally have uh, plastic draped over it. We can grow vertical gardens up teepee poles and other structures. People can sign up to learn about composting and also how to grow in containers. During the summer months, a farm stand is open on Fridays, inviting people to come by and buy organic foods at retail prices. The U-Pick Garden is open to the neighborhood as well as volunteers who come help with the many chores here on the farm. The farm provides lots of interesting education as well as rest. And what you see here are worm bins and compost bins for making the soil rich. We also have honeybees. This area is called the apiary and you can see the stacks of boxes where the bees are storing their honey. We have created a little fence around it to protect them and us from their activity. Honeybees are just one kind of pollinator that works hard to produce fruit in the whole farm. We also encourage land dwelling bees. And you can see here that the orchard um, also has berry bushes that are getting ready to be planted. The orchard is about to bloom. The property has several greenhouses and they are currently under renovation. One greenhouse is used for propagation and starting young plants to sell and also plant here at the farm. Propagation is very basically here at the farm planting seed in these little pots and keeping them warm until they're ready to go into the ground. Now we can take a look at the vegetables that are growing around the farm. These are fava beans. Some dinosaur kale that overwintered. Swiss chard. A variety of herbs and vegetables. Some more well known than others. The winter garden has other kinds of kale as well. This one is a green curly kale. Looks kind of like cauliflower. And here's one that has purple leaves that we're more familiar with finding in the grocery store. Some other interesting plants include cardoon or artichoke. They're both from the same family and they look the same, but different parts are used for eating. We also have varieties of cabbage. Herbs that grow in the garden include rosemary, Chicory is an interesting plant, kind of tart or bitter, but used in salads.
Edible pea pods, and leaves and stems are also eaten by some cultural and ethnic groups. And what we have here is called an herb spiral. It's planted with a variety of culinary herbs. Looks like sage, thyme, rosemary, and a few others. I see lavender in the background. There's a close-up of the lavender that hasn't started blooming yet. Really only blooms in the summer months. There's a variety of culinary sage. This will also get blooms. And much to my surprise, I found flowers blooming here in the winter garden. Calendula is a flower that is used for many things. The petals can be eaten and also used for skin care. A lot of products that we find in our health food stores include calendula. It's in the marigold family. And there are many varieties. When it's blooming, we see lots of different colors from yellows to reds, orange and peachy colors, apricot shades, all in between. This one is small, but it even looks a little bit like a sunflower. The commitment to food sustainability includes food donations that are packed in the greenhouse and kept in cold storage. This food will be distributed. Outdoor space is allowed for cleaning and preparing food that comes from the garden that will also be packaged and stored in the cold storage until it is ready for distribution. Come check out the park. See how you might join volunteers and staff and neighbors enjoying your local park at work. Welcome to Rainier Beach Urban Farm and Wetlands. I hope to see you there.